Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Well, when I say tutorial, I actually mean a race because what we're going to do is we're going to work out does rendering a Final Cut Pro 10 timeline make your exports go quicker? I recently saw on social media a post and somebody said it doesn't really matter whether you render or not. I think that's wrong. So let's test it out and let's see in what circumstances rendering on the timeline might help or it might not, who knows. As always, if you like the tutorials, please give us a like and subscribe. And also what we're going to do, we're going to post a Final Cut trivia question on here just to make things a bit more fun. And if you get that right, it has to be exactly right in the comments, then maybe I might give a plug in away to the first person who posts that. So you never know. Right, let's get on with it. A few things before we start. First one is to go into preferences. And in here, if you look under playback, we're going to make sure that the background render is turned off. Now, by default, that's actually 0.3 seconds. And I find it always gets in the way when it's that low. So if I have it on, I tend to push it up to about 7 or 10. At 0.3, whenever I try and do something, it goes in and out of render. And I think that's a mistake. I would actually set that actually quite high, as I said. But for this, we need it turned off. So no rendering happens in the background and affects the results. Also, I'm going to reboot Final Cut Pro 10 in between each test to make sure um, I've, you know, I've got clear RAM and everything like that. And also, most importantly, I'm going to delete the generated library files. So we've got the project up here or the library up here, and I'm just going to delete the library files, all of those. OK, and get rid of those to make sure we start from the same point every time. And as you can see, I've got the toolkit demo here that um, we released a few months ago and it's got lots of effects in it. You know, it's got tracking. This one, look, it's got about, I don't know, seven or so graphics overlaid over the top. It's got blurs, loads of stuff on here. Um, so I thought this would be a really good test um, for it rather than just plain, you know, plain footage on a timeline. So that's about two minutes long and we're going to export it. We're going to export it to the desktop, which is obviously using the SSD. And we're also connected via 10 giggy at the back of the iMac to our fast storage. And that'll be the same for all of them. And hopefully that will speed things up as well. Um, and we should get a good result. Right. So this is the first one we're going to do. And this is unrendered. It's a 1080 timeline. Um, and it's rendering in the ProRes 422 codec. And also what I've got is I've got a little app here, Good Stopwatch. Found this on the uh, Mac App Store for 99 pence. And um, that will be our timer rather than having my iPhone out. So you can actually see what's going on. Also, depending on how quick the renders are, I'm not going to make you sit through them all as well. I'll speed them up, but the time you'll be able to see the timer speed up as well. Right, so let's go for the first one. So this is master file and I'm going to call this ProRes uh, non rendered okay next it's going to go off to the desktop hit save and then I'm going to start start the stopwatch and you can see here we go it's beginning to render now I'm actually running um, the screen recording software at the same time. So that's going to be the same across everything. And also there's going to be a bit of a slight delay with me hitting the stopwatch button, as you can see, because I can't have that on the screen and the whole lot of the Final Cut Pro 10 time at the same time. But I don't think that'll be a problem. And as you can see, we tended to munch our way through this. We're up to about, what, a third of the way through. I'm not going to open the window. Once I've set the thing run rendering, I'm going to leave well alone until I see it's actually finished. It's, it's pretty impressive, actually, for quite a complicated timeline. So we're coming up to three quarters of the way through. Maybe I should have sped this one up a bit and stop talking. Here we go, we're coming up to it. Last bit. And that's done. 
120, or let's call that 121. So that is a 1080p timeline rendering to uh, ProRes 422. And as you can see from the line, the dots along the top, it is unrendered. So there's our first time, 1 minute 21. I've shut down Final Cut Pro 10, reopened it, and also deleted the library files. However, what I have done, which you could probably see, is I've rendered. So I just did a manual render, so we've lost the dots along the top of the line. So everything you can see is actually rendered on there. I mean, it plays back anyway unrendered on, a, on an iMac Pro. Um, but that's all rendered now. Right, OK. Now for the next one. Let's call up the good stopwatch, make sure that's all nicely set. And then I'm going to go master file. Um, and that's render test. Let's just call that render test two. Right, so I'm going to hit the next button and hit save and quickly go to the stopwatch. Trigger that off. And here we go. Quarter of the way through already. Half the way through. Boom. 16 seconds. Well, there you go. I think that kind of proves it, doesn't it? That um, rendering the timeline actually helps with exports. I mean, I'm actually quite shocked. There's a difference between 121 and 17 seconds. And that kind of really kind of knocks it on the head for people that are saying it doesn't really matter because to me it does. This is this is speed. And I tend to have background rendering on, as I said, at 10 seconds because I get distracted by a telephone call or, you know, I go make a sandwich, a cup of tea or something like that. And I come back and I, I and, it, and rent stuff's rendered. You've got a long show. First of all, that's going to be easier on your computer because it's going to be using the render files instead of having to drag everything off the storage. And secondly, when you come to do an export, your um, export times are going to be a lot, lot quicker. I mean, that is what that's a fifth of the time of not rendering. So I think we can really say, you know, in true myth busting style to say that it doesn't really matter. It does. Rendering really helps when it comes to export times. However, I think there might be a couple of instances where it might not matter too much. And I'm going to reboot and we're going to reinvestigate those. But for that quick test, I think that's well proved. I'm back on the same timeline. I've rebooted Final Cut and I've also deleted the renders, as you can see from the dots along the top of the timeline there. Now, the previous two exports we did were using the ProRes 422 codec. So the export was the same as the rendered codec on the timeline, if that makes sense. Now, where I think this might not come into play is if we actually um, render or export to a codec that's not the same as the timeline. So H.264 is a good example. We do a lot of that. So why don't I try exporting this to start off with to the desktop um, H.264. And as you can see from the dots, that's unrendered. So let's go. I've actually got it in a master file. So I'm going to change this um, and I'm going to go Apple devices, uh, better quality. And let's call this um, H264. Next on there. And again, let's call up the good stopwatch after this. So I've hit save and start there. In fact, I might actually have to kind of run this one fast because H264 takes a bit of processing. Coming up to 2 minutes 30, and there you go. We've stopped 2.29-ish, give or take a second for me hitting the button on there. And as you'd expect, because we're rendering to H.264, it's actually taken quite a bit longer to get the timeline um, exported into H.264 um, onto the desktop there. Um, but this is the unrendered version. So is rendering the timeline going to help speed up this um, export or, or, or not? We'll see. So I'm going to have to shut down, come back again, and then render, and then we'll do another test. 
we're back. We have restarted, deleted all the files, but we've actually generated the render files on here. As you can see, no dots along the top there. So let's go and share this master file. Let's call this H2642. Settings are going to be better quality like the previous one. And that's to Apple devices. That's absolutely fine. So next to the desktop and we go straight to the time code or stopwatch and hit start. Now expect this. Well, it looks straight away as if it's quicker, which is really interesting. So it's using the render files to make the H.264 from. So if you actually look, we're nearly halfway through and it's at 16, 17 seconds. I'm actually quite, I never thought it was going to be this quick. That is really interesting. So coming up to, that's three quarters of the way through. Interesting, it slowed down a bit near the end there. I'm having a good think about it. Maybe it's not going to be as fast as I thought it was. And the final bit. Come on, done. So 53 seconds. So that's quite interesting because exporting an H.264 from the timeline when it's rendered is actually quicker than having a non-rendered H.264 output. So when it's actually going to make the H.264, it looks like it has to render the timeline and then use that render use the render files to make the H.264 from. So in both on both occasions of having um, a non-render timeline, you get longer render times or the other way around. If you render the timeline when when you export to either the same codec as the timeline or a different codec um, as the timeline, you're going to get faster render times. So I would recommend that you actually run always with background rendering on. But as I said to you before, stick it up about seven seconds so it doesn't get in the way and kick in when you actually try and do something, you get the beach ball every now and then switching in and out of it. So I think we've really kind of smashed that smashed that theory that it doesn't help um, to bits. It does help. It does help an awful lot. And here are the results. A non-rendered 422 export took 1 minute 21 seconds. However, if you render the timeline before export, again to 422, that took 17 seconds. Now, my basic maths isn't good, but I say that's 79% difference. A non-rendered H.264 export took 2 minutes 29 seconds, whereas the rendered H.264 export took 53 seconds. And I reckon that's a 65% difference. So as you can see, really well worth rendering. Now, some people might say, well, you know, I'm, I'm too busy to render. Well, you can just leave the thing rendering in the background like I'm doing right at the moment. As you can see, we have got the dots going across because we set the background render to go. As I said, you might be making a telephone call, going to the toilet, making a cup of tea. It really helps to render. Um, what I would say, though, is that also the benefit, if you have an unrendered timeline and do an export, it doesn't load the renders onto the timeline. So it's not as if you're going to benefit from, from actually doing the export and getting the renders. If you make a mistake on your first export, it's going to have to do the whole lot of renders again to export that thing out. So again, another really good reason to have background rendering on. And, and I can't really see any advantage to having it turned off. I'm, I'm really sorry if that offends a few people because um, I think a lot of people think that, you know, because you've got a fast machine, you can do it. I agree, but why not have faster exports on there? Finally, a bit of FCP trivia for the end, and why not? Something a bit fun. Um, something to show how much you know about Final Cut, and maybe I'll give a plug in away to the person who gets it right. I need the exact time code written on the old FCP icon. The exact time code. And there's a little hint in there, you know, saying exact. I need the exact time code from the original FCP icon, the clapperboard. So the first time it came out, the original time code on there. Okay, good luck with that. And uh, thank you for 
looking at the tutorial. I think it's really been interesting working out those render speeds. And next time we might do something different again. So see you then. Bye bye.